inside the 20. That's Molina. 10, inside the 20. That's Molina. Straight ahead to the 11. Molina and Michael in the backfield with Manziel. Hand off to Michael. Oh, and a nice tackle right at the 11-yard line, or he would have been gone. Robert Shaw wrapped him up. Michael and Molina. Blank Manziel in the backfield. Give to Molina. Stutter steps. Diving forward, and it'll be close. Both tackles together, Jokel and Matthews. That's how they play it. Michael, the lone back. They give it to him. Spins. And I believe he got, he didn't need much. He didn't get much. It's a pretty big early measurement. Just. Oh, by the nose of the ball. Just. Three wide receivers white. Watch Aku to the near side. Manziel straight back. Looking. Looking. All day. Chase to his right. Throws. Touchdown, Aggies. Mike Evans. Makes it 6 0 AM. Well, we had a little bit of a chess match going on there between offense and defensive coordinator. Johnny Manziel, as he's looking back on that play, he got great protection. Only four guys rushing. That offensive front did a masterful job of giving him time. And if you give a quarterback and wide receivers with that much athleticism that long, eventually somebody's going to come open. Mike Evans comes up with a touchdown grab. The prodigious Taylor Bertolette gets one under his belt. The extra point is good, following another Johnny football scramble and throw. Well, it's kind of what you've come to expect out of this A&M offense is the athleticism of Manziel. And you see what he does here. When he runs toward the line of scrimmage, that completely decimates the defense's integrity because you have to come up and respect his running threat. And when you do that, the wide receivers downfield become open. So again, a four-man rush, dropping seven into coverage. Manziel very patiently weaving his way around. The all-time leading ground gainer gets the first down call, and he is stacked up, no gain. This is the number three team in the nation in the FCS division, and they're used to the big stage. Ball on the flank, it's tipped incomplete. Third and ten. Aggies rush four, Bell over the middle, caught. They ripped up seven wins in a row. Big numbers. That one off of the hands of the intended receiver, Chance Nelson, and out of bounds. A very good pass, and you've got Richard Sincere now in the backfield in that shotgun formation. That's the Bearcat formation. Sincere will keep it off the fake and struggles forward for a gain of four. Setting up third down and six. And a threat with his legs as well. Bell dumping it off. Flanders turning up field. And another first down for the Bearcats as he is wrestled out of bounds by Stephen Terrell. Trying to replicate, if you can, what it's like here at College Station. Bell on the option. And he'll turn it forward for a gain of three. Maybe showing pressure, then they back out. Flanders on the carry, nowhere to go. And he is wrapped up hard by DeMontre Moore. The 3-4 to the 4-3, some growing pains. But now it's third down, two for two on this drive so far for Bell. And he overthrows Sincere inside the Aggie 40. And now the Bearcats will punt. With a punt from Foster. Knuckleballs it downfield and not a very, not very far. Yep. Out of bounds. And the Aggies will have their second possession on their first. Manziel. Doing what Johnny Manziel does. Finding Evans in the end zone for the opening score. We've always believed what you stand for says a lot about who you are. We are Texas A&M University, home of the 12th man. The perfect photo nice. isn't always the one you plan to take. Whoa, check it out. Hey, baby goat. 
Oh, that's not yours. What's he got there? It's not yours. Now you can take a photo right from video, so you'll never miss the perfect shot. AT&T introduces the HTC One X, now $99.99. Rethink possible. Kevin Sumlin watching now. Somehow that is flipped over Manziel's head. Manziel, straight back. Who is right? He had to come back for the ball, and then he is calling. What an exceptional grab, though, Ralph. My goodness. Setting up third and eight. Manziel to the sideline. And it's going to depend on the spot. It's Evans again, and he is sworn. It looks like the mark is right at the line of scrimmage where the official is standing. Knows how to do that. He's an extremely talented coach and highly decorated. And now he's watching Manziel bust into the open. And he's tackled just inside Bearcat territory. Darnell Taylor again with the stop, and he's been busy already. Well, you can see why Darnell Taylor is a leader on this Bearcats team, because Johnny Manziel in the open field usually makes guys miss. Darnell Taylor comes up with a great open field tackle, and Jesse Bochin follows up with another big stick right there on Ben Molina. This Bearcat defense is not making it easy. Manziel again back to pass. And that one... It was hit as he threw, and it came tumbling out of there. The ball did, and so did Manziel. Just inside midfield. Manziel looking for all the way. Molina with the tip off. Manziel trying to escape, and they got him. Jesse Bochamp among the first to arrive. And how well that sets up your defense from a field position standpoint. So Epperson doing a magnificent job. First down, Bearcat formation. Flanders off the handoff from Sincere. He's got over 20, over 20 Sam Houston State rushing records. Ryan Bell, the junior from China Spring, out on the flank, caught first down, and again, it's Trey Diller. Bell ready for the direct snap. Looks to the air again. This side of the field, and very minimal gain, maybe two. High formation behind him. Sincere gives it to Flanders. Plowing forward, keeping the legs churning. And out to the 45. That's North Dakota State. Swing it again. Rear side. He gets away and then it's tripped up. Again, it's Diller. Howard Matthews. A literal shoestring tackle. And our first flag. Ball start. Offense, number 74. Bell to his left. Bell got it out on the near side. Third and eight for Bell. Trying to keep the drive alive, sincere, and that was broken up. Great job of Kevin Summon and being a part of those big wins against number one teams. Matt Foster, fair catch by Harris. And the Yankees will start at their five. Up seven to nothing. Manziel straight back. Extra protection in. Floats it to the end zone. Evans, touchdown, Aggies! We need to remind you how easy it is to disappear. And yet, here I am. Tuesday. Where are you going next day? series in this game. Bearcats on first down. Bell throwing back to the near side and overthrows his intended receiver. Second and ten for Bell and the Bearcats. And that one broken up neatly by Everett. Only yards close. And in fact, Sam Houston State had the ball for two more seconds in the first quarter, and now one floated down the sideline, and it's Everett again breaking it up, intended for Trey Diller, who had four first quarter catches. I am with head men's basketball coach for the Aggies, Billy Kennedy, and his team is off to a 3-0 start this season. Coach, tell me what you've learned about your ball club in these first three. 
a lot of guards have made a good adjustment, especially the new guys that played really well recently. Uh, we'll step up in competition. Hopefully, we'll continue to play well. Yeah, this team is off to Kansas City tomorrow. They'll play Monday and Tuesday night in the championship rounds of the CBE Classic. First up on Monday night is St. Louis. You'll either play Kansas or Washington State on Tuesday. What are you looking forward to up there? Well, a much different competition. Uh, St. Louis has made it to the round of 32 last year. A lot of veterans, a lot of juniors and seniors. A good team. We'll find out a lot about ourselves on the road this week. All the best to the KC coach. All right, thank you. That's Defense Billy Kennedy and Ralph on Monday night. It's the Aggies and Billikens on the hardwood. Thanks, Wilt. All out of bounds and avoid the hit. Manzel dumping it off. And it's Trey Williams. Manzel does a good job. A little, just again, a little touch pass. Gets it out there. His wide receiver can make a play. It's a six-yard gain, and now Manzel scrambling. First down yardage and more. So is Manziel on first and 10 at the 46. Swope on the flank. Gets a block from Evans and is out of bounds just inside Bearcat territory at the 49. 236th catch last week at Alabama set a school mark and there goes Manziel again. Came back toward the inside and down the sideline for another Aggie first down and another late hit against the Bearcat defense who are going after the head of the snake. Uh, Darnell Taylor, a little bit extra juice there as he pulls Manziel down. And I'm telling you, you know, Johnny, he does incite a little bit of this as he stays in bounds and tries to challenge a couple more defenders. Take a look here at the end of the run. Darnell Taylor's going to flip him back over the top after the whistle was blown, and that's, that's going to draw a flag every time. 22-yard gain for Manziel, and then add on the penalty yardage, and they'll spot it at the 13. I'll tell you what, it, he is so exciting when you see him break containment, and it's controlled chaos, and, and, and is probably the best way I can describe it. And Johnny Manziel makes the decision to run the ball. He, he, he runs it. It's with the plan. It looks like it's a lot of impromptu stuff, but young man knows what he's doing and knows where he needs to be. Cliff Kingsbury told us yesterday he expects every play to be a big play, and he's looking for six here, and out of the hands of Swope at the goal line, defended well. Second and 10 at the 13. Manziel to his right, and then he is straightened up, but continues to fight forward, and more Bearcats pile on. But Darnell Taylor and Johnny Manziel are having a frequency of meetings here. Manziel straight back. Extra protection in. Floats it to the end zone. Evans, touchdown, Aggies! You talked about the basketball prowess of Mike Evans. And you're going to get another really good look at it on this touchdown grab. 6'5", 218 pounds. Using the body. It's like going up and getting a rebound. There is a flag, though. 33 is ejected for the ball game. Late flag in the middle of the field. It was after the touchdown. So the touchdown stands. Well, we're getting news now that Kristen Michael is ejected from the game. The penalty will be assessed on the succeeding kickoff. We'll have our guys Try and find that as Taylor Bertolette out of the Epperson hold. Try and tack on the extra point. And he does. 14-0 Aggies, and for the second time already in this game. Mike Evans on the receiving end of a Johnny Manziel touchdown pass. Manziel goes the other way. One man to beat. Touchdown, Manziel.
the Bearcat. Michael was just dinner is after the dinner. Well, it was after the touchdown play and far from where the celebration took place. Back at the 20-yard line, again, far from the end zone, Kristen Michael was jawing with one of the Bearcat players who I did not get a number on. A referee, guys, was standing no more than two yards from that jawing altercation. You have to be aware of that. All of a sudden, Kristen Michael did slap the Bearcat on the side of the helmet very hard. The ref easily could see it. In all likelihood, he probably deserved to be ejected. Cooler heads simply have to prevail in that situation. A big, big error by the Aggie running back. And it's been a tough row to hoe, too, for Kristen Michael. Broke his right leg a couple of seasons ago. Last year had the knee injury. Coming back finally, kind of getting back into things. And yep. then this. Well, it really is a leader on this team. The senior out of Beaumont Westbrook. A vocal leader, an emotional leader. And emotions got the better of him in that exchange. And he is no longer a part of this game. So Bertolet this time from the 20. And the Bearcats will have good field position here. And a big return for the Bearcats. For the Bearcat again, it's sincere. Give off of right tackle to Ryan Wilson. And the Eggies shove him back. Option. Pitch. And great tackle. Coming up is Devontae Harris on some plays. And then some plays if you're out of position, it doesn't look so good. Bell to his right on third and 13, and he overthrows his intended receiver, Chance Nelson. They said they wanted to get a look at Williams, so I believe they'll be getting a look at him. Off the play, fake Manziel again. And it's Evans busting away. Midfield. And down to the 46, and flags go flying again. Nursing Walking a hamstring, and you sure didn't show Number right five. there. The penalty is 10 yards. Let's call the foul. Will still result in a first down. 32-yard gain mitigated by that flag. And there's Molina diving ahead for four yards on first down. Direct snap to Manziel. And a first down as Walker makes the catch. Nice job right there of Johnny Manziel. Patient in the pocket, waiting for Darrell Walker to clear on that quick slant route. Drills in right between the numbers, and the first down. Fakes to Molina, flag on the play. Probably going to be coming back. It's holding against a and Trip to Tuscaloosa. Mm -hmm. Manziel. And he missed. McNeil. Quarterback draw all the way. And he picks his way forward to set up a third and 12. Six feet of those defensive linemen. JP Cleveland just kind of stuck there like a fire hydrant. Thing up at the top. Manziel with time, throwing Evans, and it's intercepted. Dak Swanson with the pick. And so a turnover for the AM offense. We're so talking about these cover corners and how well they play in the position that they get. This time, Dak Swanson steps in front of Mike Evans. So the 5'11 guy gets in front of the 6'5 guy. That's better. And, and making sure that he's in between the receiver and the ball does a good job of high pointing that. That interception ties him for the all time record at Sam Houston State with Ronnie Shope, who played in 1956 to 1959 for the Bearcats. Puts himself now in the record leaders in San Jose State history. Flanders. Ely said in the summer he looked at the weights online of the competition as Flanders is corralled. Tony Hurd Jr. with the stop. Bell will be throwing here. Straight back. That one is picked. And he's had the ball. And they fumble it. It's picked up in tight work. Bags made the interception. And then it was picked up by Harris. He tried to go down the sidelines. And Texas A&M is in business with a short field. Well, that was perfect coverage. And Donnie Bags, the linebacker, is playing a bracket coverage. You'll see he'll be underneath the receiver. 
was a nice job of catching it. Defeating Chance Nelson there and Dustin Harris. How about that being on the spot after the fumble by Bags? Nice job of going up again, catching it, high pointing that ball. Donnie Bags, a sophomore out of League City. And Dustin Harris, Johnny on the spot, making sure that the Aggies maintain possession. Three receivers left. Evans to the near side, Molina in motion, first and 10 at the 13. Quarterback draw, Manziel for the Aggies at the 10. Molina battering Rams his way down to the five. Manziel goes the other way. One man to beat. Touchdown, Manziel. Exactly how you draw it up in the playbook, right? Yeah, exactly. Running the option play to the right. Doesn't like what he sees, and it's very well defended by the Bearcats, but you cannot coach what Johnny Manziel just did. Not only did he break the play, broken play freelancing, but he outruns two defenders to the pylon. Three plays, 13 yards. Bernalette after a botch snap and flag on the play, and then Finally, it's dead. Legally kicking the ball. Offense, the ball was loose after fumble. The penalties declined. Tried over. They have given up plays, and so he readily admits it's a work in progress. Man, you can't, you can't have a sit down with Coach Schneider like we did and then not come away impressed. Oh, no, it's going to be a direct snap to Sander, or Flanders. Nothing. But how about DeMontre Moore? Wow. What a play. This Bearcat team has missed last four of their third down conversions and not able to come up with the catch there. Trey Diller from the 34. Up 20 nothing. Manziel. Throwing. Watch it. Who makes the catch at the 31. Two things we need to talk about on this play. The protection for Johnny Manziel. Outstanding. And Wachaku, there is great coverage there by Buki Sneed, the cornerback. The ball thrown perfectly just behind Wachaku. He's able to go up and make the grab. 40-yard throw and catch. Manziel added again to Evans. Alone in the flat. Takes the tackle down the sideline. Well, this is what this offense can do. It is quick strike and it is big play. And you can see they are scrambling right now offensively to get back to the line of scrimmage, trying to get another snap off. And this is the tempo Coach Kingsbury likes to see his offense play. Manziel has it tucked. And he picks up four. Yeah, the opportunity to bring their new scheme in when the situation changes. Six nothing, Aggies. Not very often you see Johnny Manziel go under center. Yeah, but he does go under center on this particular play. Hands the ball off to Trey Williams, and he goes over the right side. Jake Matthews getting a nice block there, and just see the stretch getting out there, getting the touchdown. And Trey Williams, man, this is an exciting back, a true freshman out of Spring Decaney. Sincere pulls it away, and he'll take off. And nowhere to go. Porter is there, and so is Stephen Jenkins. And they drop him for a loss. Wow, oh, Stephen Jenkins uh, played that beautifully out of that linebacker position. Comes up, and he's not taking the fake in the open move. Jukes by Sincere, and ends up stripping the ball out. And Sean Porter coming in, tackling the ball. Stephen Jenkins got has Sincere wrapped up. Sean Porter comes in. Strips it out of his hands, and that's great starting field position for AM. Looking to increase their 27 0 lead. And you can't defense this any better than Stephen Jenkins did. Stayed at home, did not buy the fake. 
Came up with a great open field stop, and Porter, very athletic, strips the ball out. Dumps it off to Wachapu. Spins it away to the 10, to the 5. Brought down just short of the goal line. And Manzella took it himself. Touchdown, Aggies. His second rushing touchdown of the day. Well, you cannot execute a play fake any better than Johnny Manziel just did. Gary Laranche, you see number 66, comes in and tackles what he thinks is the ball carrier, but Manziel is running around the left end for a touchdown. This is not Bertolette. It's Johnny Manziel to kick the extra point. Epperson will hold. I'm Bo, and my all-time favorite is the Honey down to Kerrville to see this young man play. Looking for Mike Wachiku, Minnesota. he's got it. He's gone. Touchdown, Aggies. 89 yards. Well, Coach Rousey liked what he saw. The A&M fans love what they're seeing. An 89-yard touchdown pass. And you could not throw that ball any better than Johnny Manziel did. He led Azuma Wachiku exactly where he needed to be to catch that ball beyond the two Bearcat defenders. It's great to see Easy coming up with another big grab for this team. This is not Bertolette. It's Johnny Manziel to kick the extra point. Epperson will hold. No. Wide yeah. right. Well, what, what happened there? Straight away kicker. He needs a square toe. See the smile on the face. Well, I guess he can't do everything. Yeah, we talk about the recruitment, though. Tom Rosley, who is a very talented offensive coach. Here we go on the extra point. Oh. oh. Almost. He's, I, bet, I bet that's the thing he'll talk about, too. Right? I can tell you who appreciates the work of youngsters. That's head women's basketball coach Gary Blair here at Texas A&M. He's got a very young squad on his hands this season and a very big game tomorrow at 1.30 at Reed Arena. Coach Blair, it's your Aggies against the UConn Huskies, number two team in the nation. They'll be number one if they win because Baylor got beat by Stanford. So they're playing for number one. We're having a chance to knock off a number one two weeks in a row with what we did with Alabama football and hopefully what we can do with this great crowd here today. They'll come watch us tomorrow night. Maybe get Johnny football out to the crowd. You gave a message to the, to, to the crowd earlier today about the game tomorrow and you dropped Johnny football's name. Johnny football, if they want to come see Betty basketball, come on out because we've got a lot of exciting young ladies. I want them to see what we're all about. Great having you here, and it's military appreciation today, and you're one of our former vets. Thanks to you. Well, I appreciate it. like to say thanks to the veterans for our service. Simplify and give them hell, core. That's Gary Blair. His Aggies <laughs> tomorrow at 1.30 at Reed Arena against the UConn Huskies. Ralph Shea, why don't you stick around College Station tomorrow and join us at the basketball court. I want to meet Betty Basketball. Bearcats off the field. It's third and two. Bell off the play fake. Rolling right. Good pass out onto the flank. And it's T.J. Jones, the tight end, making the catch and moving the chains from the 43. Bell. Good protection, but now he's chased. Throwing it deep. And overthrows per, per, uh, Smith. Pardon me, his intended receivers. Extremely good coverage. Ryan Wilson on the handoff. Bell tip incomplete. Was that Jonathan Mathis? Maybe got his hand on the ball there. Not sure, but good push by that defensive front. I mean, he gets upfield. He sees that he's not going to be able to make it to the quarterback. It's that big right call out. Comes up with a deflection. Foster over Harris's head and out of the back of the end zone. AM will pick it up at the 25 yard line when we come back. Texas AM led 7 0 after the first quarter, 34 0 at half. 
And Johnny Manziel with the big bomb to Wachiku for a 40-0 lead for AM. So here's Showers, looking deep, has a man. Three to the 10. Touchdown, AM. So here's seven yards through the air and three touchdowns. He's also rushed 16 times, an even 100, and just two touchdowns there. Well, and they miss extra point. I was going to say, and he's 0 for 1 <laughs> on extra point attempts. So here's Showers, looking deep, has a man. Three to the 10. Touchdown, a &M. Look, Kendrick Williams with the catch, and wow. Well, Williams lined up on the outside of that three receiver set. Gonna run the skinny post, the two inside receivers, draw the defenders down, and you see LaKendrick Williams wide open in the middle of the field in the throw by Showers. On the money. And we talked to Coach Kingsbury yesterday, Ralph, and he told us, he listen, our offense is our offense. I mean, this is what we do in, in the guys who have put in a lot of time and played a lot and try hard every day at practice, you know, we're not going to dial it down when they go into the game. We want those guys to get reps because we may need those guys down the road. To my right, Jacob Green, an All-American. To my left, R.C. Slocum, the winningest head coach in Aggie football history. And these two guys are going to be instrumental in some facilities that are being built here at Texas A&M. Jacob, he's with the 12th Man Foundation, and the very next phase of facilities for Texas A&M football is a nutrition center. What can you tell us about where we're headed with, the, with that nutrition center? Well, I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, our Hall of Fame coach, uh, R.C. Slocum, the nutrition center is going to be named after Coach Slocum. Uh, it's something that's uh, it's going to be tremendous for our student athletes, all student athletes, and and who better than uh, R.C. Slocum, the winningest coach and one of the greatest coaches to ever coached here, to to have his name up on it. And uh, we're looking at December 31st. Uh, we're going to break ground, and uh, it's going to be something beautiful. And coach, that's got to mean a lot to you because uh, Kevin Sumlin was one of your assistants at Texas A&M. A lot of people know that. And, and he really wanted that. He really wanted your name on that nutrition center. Got to be very meaningful to you. Well, it is. I've spent my adult life here at Texas A&M, and uh, it means so much to me. But more importantly, I think, is what it will mean to our athletes. You know, this is something we've got. We've got so much going for us right now. And in the old days, we had Kane Hall, which was a great dining facility for our athletes in terms of what they ate, in terms of just the family atmosphere it created. And now our, our players have to eat at fast food restaurants. You know, we've got no place. And so this is such an important part of our future and our facilities that uh, it means a whole lot to me that we're working towards getting our players a good place, uh, a good dining facility. But it is a, a bonus to me to have my name on it. But a uh, very important step forward in our program to provide this for all of our athletes. And also, before we send it back up, I want to tell you congratulations. On December 4th, you'll be inducted into College Football's Hall of Fame. Great award for you. Congratulations on it, Coach. Well, thank you very much. Again, it's one of those awards that I had some great players like Jacob Green, and I'd go on and on. I had great coaches like Kevin Sumlin to help make all that possible. All right, a couple of great Aggies down here, Jacob Green and R.C. Slocum. Like I said, they're obviously enjoying this one. And the Aggies are trying to keep the Bearcats off the scoreboard. This sets up about a third and two of that, and the help that that will provide to the recruiting process almost immeasurable. Bootleg completes it. And Steven Terrell doing a good job of coming up and getting the tight end on that play. And here's Sincere with an earnest give to Flanders. Jacob Green's pictures were all over that stadium. Now hands it again to Flanders. Breaks a couple of tackles and gets within a yard of first down yardage. On third and short here, you think the 
I'd like to see it get the first down and move the sticks, and they do. Downhill. Bell off the play fake. Throwing long. And almost intercepted by Terrell. Great coverage so far in this game. Miller in motion. Sincere gives it to Flanders, who knows he's forward for maybe a yard. Direct snap. Bell throwing. Tip caught. Diller first down. Breaks a tackle inside the 20 to the 15. Sincere with a direct snap. Flanders right behind him. A receiver to either side. He'll run the option. Take it himself. Slips one tackle and gets forward for about three. The front seven, we've got to be bigger and more athletic. And deeper. Sincere takes it himself. Janice Joplin, yes. That's the fact. And Shea Walker. Uh, well, I was going to go with Jimmy Johnson next. Jimmy Johnson, yes. Babe Zaharias. Babe Zaharias. Bell hands it off. And a first down for the Bearcats as Keyshawn Hill again driving forward inside the five. Since Flanders in motion, and he'll take it. And nowhere to go. He slides down. Slide to the left, Diller to the right. Bell rolling left, throwing for pride. He dropped it. Pretty good throw. Bell looking, throwing, and incomplete. And they get the flag. It was Chance Nelson who was held up. Pass interference, defense, number 21. Bell, Flanders, touchdown, Bearcats. And they're on the board. Ralph, up until this point. Uh oh, onside oh, kick. Oh, onside kick. It pops up in the air at midfield and. The Bearcats have yeah. it. There's more white jerseys than maroon jerseys yeah, that around the ball. Caught him completely off guard. Uh, Coach Willie Fritz. <laughs> Jesse Bochamp looks like he came up with the with the recovery there. And that's Ben Molina, number one. It, that means the defense has been out for almost the entire quarter. Absolutely. A minute six left. And they're out here again. Flanders busts it forward for nine on first down. Flanders again, first down, Bearcats. It, I think very, uh, very accepting and glad to have an opportunity to catch their breath a little bit. Aggies led 34 0 at half. Headed two touchdowns here in the third quarter. Long play to a Wachiku. Showers throw a long one himself, and then Flanders gets the Bearcats on the board, and they're looking for more when the fourth quarter starts. before Thanksgiving. There they go. Well, and after that three-week road trip, almost month-long, excuse me, three-game road trip, Aggies host Missouri here next week. Bell, deep, caught, and wrestled out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Chance Nelson, Bearcats, down 47-0. They scored. 47-7, onside kick, and now this, and Bell to the end zone, touchdown! K.J. Williams, the big guy, gets him on the board again. Bell in another transfer from A&M. K.J. 6'3", 250 pounds, out of Norman, Oklahoma. That you would like to follow, and, and you know, you think about what Johnny is now doing for this offense and for this team, very similar. Good offensive front. I mean, they're number three in the nation in the FCS division, so this is not a cupcake team that you get to play late in the season. This is a very good team. And so it's okay. been a long slog here for the A&M team. Yeah, Kevin Sumlin was talking about that yesterday. As, again, it's 
Ryan Wilson. Number four. I've been around a fair number of coaches in my life, and this guy is truly inspiring. Aggies have this one defended. They don't let him get to the edge. So two really big games going on tonight, but certainly getting into the top ten is going to help validate that push for an at-large BCS berth. That Fiesta Bowl, if they are to use one of their at-large picks on an SEC team, you're, you're thinking they would do it with a Western-tier team, meaning A&M or LSU. Those types of things will all be decided. Sorry about that, Chair. Third quarterback, Matt Junkle. He's got a man in the clear and just misses LaKendrick Williams. <laughs> and Epperson, number 10 to play in the fourth. Diller with the fair catch at the 45, so good field position again for the Bearcats. 39-yard punt. 47-14, Texas A&M leading Sam Houston State University. Wonderful day for college football. More fodder for the Heisman conversation. And the Bearcats looking to make it respectable. Catch me. Back to pass. Brett on the option. Late pitch. Maybe a yard or two. Brett fakes it. Drops back to pass. Throws it. Caught. First down and more and down to the 30-yard line. Well-designed play. Ridgeway Frank into the pile. He jumped out 47 0. Last two touchdowns coming from the Bearcats. And Gret on the keeper dives forward for three. He's had 142 yards on the ground coming in. He gave it to Frank. Stack receivers to either side. Five coming. Gret escapes. Throws it. Caught. At the nine-yard line, Chance Nelson for the first down. Bridgeway Frank cutting back. Oh, and he's just tackled at the two-yard line. Red handing it off, and he's in this time. Bridgeway Frank for the touchdown. And the Bearcats keep coming here with 537 to play in the fourth. It's 47-20. Good blocking at the point of attack. Nice seam, nice hole. Back in, back in service, and it put the Bearcat defense completely on their heels. Jokel comes out firing again. And Jokel after the gain, it's second and three. And again to the air. Long pass just out of the reach of Darrell Walker. They knew that he had a free play, did Matt Jokel. Clearly offsides on the defense. First down. For AM in the second half. Joe Gulp underneath. And a good first down gain again by Gaston Lamascus. Three wide receivers right. Joe back to throw. Dumps it off underneath. An opportunity to get game experience for some of your players. And Trey Williams ripping off a big run here. Still gone. And the ball is stripped. Fumble, the Bearcats have it. Uh, Dax Swanson comes up with the fumble recovery, and, and this is an outstanding run by Trey Williams. But you have to protect the ball. Freshman running back makes a couple of guys miss. See how he's hearing that ball on the inside, Ralph? You got to get that ball on the outside. He doesn't do it. He keeps the ball inside. You want to switch it back to the sideline. And if you do that, then Swanson is not able to come through and strip the ball out. How much Swanson? Pretty good game. He ties the, the school's all-time interception mark with his 13th on Manziel. And now we've got Brett running loose inside the 40 and wrestled down at the 32. Ridgeway Frank cutting to the outside, turning the corner inside the 20, diving forward to the 10. Stepped out of bounds at the 12. 
Brett hands it straight ahead. Frank barging his way forward inside the five to the four-yard line. Brett hands it. Frank touchdown. Bearcats. They're in again. Just short. No, touchdown. No, no. Yeah, he's in. No, Brett. Brett. That's a the zone read. Brett did not give the ball to Frank. He hung on to it on the zone read. Tries to follow Frank into the end zone. But the AM defense stops him short oh of the end zone, but he does pick up the first down. <laughs> I was completely fooled. So he's in. A little bit of confusion going on down there right now because they got the first down marker out. And it's point try. Good. You know, it was anticipated that there would be, you know, you, you can't keep playing at the same level. And you know, give the uh, give the San Jose State Bearcats a lot of credit. They tried the onside kick again, and it looks like they came up with the ball. Well, it was Molina. The ball's going to bounce off. It's a, kind of a low liner kick. So I don't know that it's really a designed onside kick, but it's a low liner that hits the first guy there. Take a look. Yeah, and he tries to field it with the right hand. He stops the ball from going downfield, but when he does, he's not able to get on top of it. Sam Houston State comes up with another recovery on the kickoff. Kevin Jackson coming up with the ball. Well, let's see what happens here. Brett's still in there. On the 47. Frank has the ball this time. I'm positive. The Bearcats have controlled the ball for 24 minutes, 19 seconds this half. Option, pitch, Frank, nowhere to go. Gargantuan season for the Bearcats. Passed for 4,500 yards and 39 touchdowns. That's Gret keeping it again, busting it to the outside, and he lost the football. But the Bearcats come up with it. Well, Gret trying to be a little physical there at the point of attack. 108 to play. Frank into the pile. Number three team in the country, co-Southland Conference champion. Almost a certainty. And I'll say I'm certain, mm -hmm. as you did earlier. Brett handing it off. Frank staggered forward. And the game is over. Number eight, Dana Maggies. Finally returned to Kyle Field. Dash out to a 47-0 lead. And then get their key players a much-needed break. And hold off Sam Houston State University 48-20, 28 Coach Sumlin with me, Texas A&M, the winner. And a, perhaps not the greatest of finishes, but you got your ninth win, and you continue to roll with this football team. Yeah, you know, we were sloppy in the second half. We, you know, we got those other guys in there, and... You know, they got to play with more pride than we played in the second half. Really sloppy, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's a good win for us getting back here. Sets up a uh, final home game for, uh, you know, senior night. Uh, and our guys will be excited to play next week. And the talk will continue about your quarterback, but that, uh, that's something that's not a big deal to you until that senior night's over against Missouri. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's part of it. You know, he's playing pretty well. Uh, really, the first groups played pretty well the first half, and then the beginning of the second half, uh, you know, that's uh, indicative. This, the score is indicative of the backup guys playing in the second half, and, and, and give Sam Houston credit. I mean, they, they, they moved the ball. We didn't make enough plays in the second half, but, you know, we're in a good position now that this, this next week, playing Missouri, uh, a, a team we haven't beaten in a long time, our guys ought to be excited to play. Yeah, you, you said that when you talked to us yesterday. You'd be surprised if this team didn't play well considering what's at stake. There's so much out there for this team to go get, even though there's only one regular season game left. Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt, and, and our guys understand what's at stake. And, and uh, you know, we're still in the hunt in the last week of the year uh, after everything we've been through. But, uh, you know, I, I, uh, we'll go to work this week. Uh, you know, our seniors are going to have to lead us this week, and, and they've done a great job all year. I don't see that being a problem this week. Congratulations, Coach. All right, thank you. Kevin Sumlin, his Aggies, the winner by 19.